It's true, you can make brick walls in a single stroke, and you don't need too many nodes either. You'll be able to change the height and remove random bricks. This file is available on Patreon and Gumroad. All right, let's get started. So I'm using Blender version 3.2 for this one. Let's get started by adding in a curve with Shift A. I'll just add in a Bezier curve right here. And I'm also gonna add in a plane, and this is basically just for our bricks to stand on top of. We'll apply the scale of that. The reason I wanna use a curve is because we can draw with it. So if you hit tab to go into edit mode and then T to open up the side panel right here, we have this draw tool right here. Select that and you'll be able to draw things. If you see it drawing in the air, it's because it's set to cursor instead of surface. So just set it to surface and you'll be able to draw on your plane like that. Now let's go over to the Geometry Nodes workspace, and we'll just hide the plane for now so we can see better. So if you've ever seen a brick wall before, you'll know that the bricks are staggered. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a brick and we're going to put it on each of the points in a grid. But if we do that, then they'll all be right on top of each other. So we also want to instance them on the center of each face too. So to do that, we can use a node called Mesh to Points. And if we set that to faces, it will put a point in the middle of each face. And this will give us a staggered brick effect. So if you just want to make a brick wall really quickly and you don't want to draw it, you can use a grid. But drawing is more fun, so we're going to use a curve. With the curve selected, you can just hit the new button and this will create a new geometry nodes tree. So to turn this into a grid where each face is a square, the first thing we have to do is evenly space all of the points in this curve. So we can do that with a resample curve node and we want to change this to length. So our bricks, I'm going to make them uh, 0.2 meters long, so we can change this to 0.2. Now I want to extrude this upward so we can bring in an extrude node right here, extrude mesh. But you can see when we hover over this, it doesn't support curves. So first we need to turn this curve into a mesh with a curve to mesh node. We drop that in and it should work once we set this to edges. Uh, but this is pushing out in the normal direction. So to make this go straight up, that's what this offset is for. We can just put a vector in here and we just want this to go up on the Z. So we'll add one to that. So to make all of these faces square, we need the length right here and the offset to be the same value. So we can bring in a value node right here, set it to 0.2. We'll plug it in right there and right here and now we have some squares. Now, how are we gonna control the height? So one way you could do it is basically every time you want another layer, you just add an extrude mesh node again, but we would need a ton of those to make something tall. So we'll use a duplicate elements node right here, and we want to be duplicating faces. And you can see when we turn this up the amount, it's not really getting taller. So basically what's happening is it's duplicating them, but they're all on top of each other and not moving. So we can make them move by using a set position right here. And if we plug the duplicate index into the offset, you'll see that we actually do have a whole bunch, but we wanna control the direction they're moving and how far away from each other they are. Unplug that and we'll add in a combine XYZ. This will let us change you know, only the Z axis if we want, so we can plug this in right here, but they're going too far. So we can control that with a math node set to multiply, and this will let us change the height. So we already know the height that is this value right here. So we should be able to just plug it in right there. And now we can actually change the height like that. So right now, all of the points where they meet up are overlapping. So to get rid of that problem, we can just merge them with a merge by distance node right here. And when we drop this node in, you'll see that there are a lot fewer points over here now. Now, like I mentioned before, we are also going to want to put a brick in the middle of each face so we can get those points with a mesh to points node right here. And if we drop that in, it's going to replace everything. So we also want a join geometry node because we want the faces and the points. So we can just plug this in right here. We can change this to faces, and now we're getting the effect that we want right here. All we need to do is instance onto all of the points. So grab an instance on points node right here, and we can plug in whatever instance we want. So if you want, you can uh, do this all procedurally too by adding in a cube, and we're gonna have to change the size of this. And again, we know how long each brick is supposed to be. So we can change the width right here to point two and I'll make all of the other ones half as tall, so 0.1. But I think this is a little too simple, so I'm going to make a separate object. So I'll just delete that and add in a cube. Now in edit mode, I'm just going to 
bring this up one meter like that. And that's just going to make it so that the origin point is on the very bottom. And we can actually change the dimensions in our side panel right here at the bottom. So I'm going to make this the same dimensions as before, 0.2, and I'll set these to 0.1. And when we have it where we want it, we just want to apply the scale with control A. And I want to bevel this with a bevel modifier. So add a modifier right here. We can just turn the amount down pretty low. So we can hide that, select our curve again over here, and we can just drag our cube right here that we just made and plug that into the instances. So this might be fine if you're making a flat brick wall like this, but when we draw at an angle, you'll see that all of them are pointing in the same direction. And so we're gonna have to change the rotation right here. So we want to rotate all of these so they follow the curve, and that would be the curve's tangent. So we can get the tangent of the curve by going back to the beginning, and we have to do this because this is turning it into a mesh, and at this point we can't really look at the tangent anymore. So I'll bring in a node called store named attribute right here, and this is basically the same thing as a capture attribute, except instead of having this output right here, it stores it to a name, and then you can use a named attribute node like this. So I think this is just a little neater. Um, you don't have wires going from really far away. So like I said, we need the tangent. So let's bring in a curve tangent node right here. And this is a vector. So we need to change this from float to vector. Now we can plug this in right there. And we just need to give it a name. So I'll just name it tan for tangent. And now our named attribute node right here, we can search for that and we have it right here called tan. So let's bring this over to our instance on points node. And we can't really just plug this in directly. It won't work right. We need to use an align Euler to vector like that. Just make sure this is plugged into the vector. And now they should all be rotated properly. So another problem you might notice if we draw two walls next to each other, the ends won't be able to lock together because both ends are exactly the same. So what we need to do is delete all of the bricks that are on the very edge right here from only one side. And that's actually not too hard. Basically, we need to capture another attribute at the beginning. Let's just duplicate this right here. And what we want to capture is the endpoint selection right here. So I'm just going to capture just the start so we can set the end size to zero. And we also need to set this to Boolean because that's what this outputs. Plug it in right here and we'll give it a different name. I'll just name it start like that. Now we can delete those points with a delete geometry node right here. We plug that in, everything will be deleted. So we can duplicate our named attribute. And again, we named this start and we should be able to just plug this in right here. And that is deleting only the start right here. So now we should be able to interlock these if we want. And this is going to be extra useful for making things like corners like that. So to delete bricks randomly, we can use another delete geometry node right here, just put it right after, and we can bring in a random value node right here. And this takes a Boolean, so we can change this to Boolean right here, plug that in, and now it will delete random bricks like this. Obviously, if you have this set really high, you're going to have floating bricks that just look kind of wrong. So I usually set this to something low like 0 0.05, something like that. Let's damage this brick wall a little more by making some of the bricks stick out a little further. So to do that, we can bring in a translate instances node right here. And we want to put this after the instance on points because this outputs instances right here. And what's nice about this is that it looks at the local space right here. So we don't have to figure out the direction of our curve because this will do it automatically for us. This Y value is what we want to target. So to only affect the Y, we're going to need a combine XYZ right here. And we can grab another random value node. And I'll just change this to float. And we can plug this in. This is going to be way too strong. What I like to do is set this to negative 0.1 and this to positive 0.1. And then to change the strength, we can use a math node set to multiply. Just drop it in, set it to multiply. Now, when we have this set to zero, these will be perfectly smooth. And if we turn it up a little, you can see they'll start to shift sideways like that. Imperfections just make everything look a little better to me. One other thing that I think would be cool is being able to have different heights for different walls. And right now, we only have the option to change all of them at the same time. So the way we're going to do this is by using the curve radius. So if you hit N, you can see we have this radius value right here. This is meant to change the thickness of the curve. 
but we're not really using the curve that way. So we can repurpose this for something else. So let's come back over to the beginning and we're going to capture the radius. So bring another one over here and bring in the radius. And this is a float, so we need to change this to float. Plug that in and we can just name this I'll name it rad for radius. Now we can bring in a named attribute node and look for rad that we just created. And we should be able to just plug this in directly like that. And it will match this value right here, as you can see. And this is an integer. So this will only change when it gets to the next whole number. You can see us just kind of snapping like that. That's the way it works because you can't really duplicate something only by half. So the shortcut for the radius right here is Alt S. And that's what you can use to change the height of any of these walls right here. So I think the only thing we're missing now is materials, because if we go over here to look dev, everything is still just plain white. So we can set the material right here with a set material node. And we don't have any materials yet, so we can just make one over here. And I'll name it bricks, and we'll change this to bricks. Now we can go over to the shading area right here. And what's nice about using instances is that we can very easily give each of these bricks a random color by bringing in the object info node. And we have this random slot right here. And if you plug it in, you can see each brick has a random value between zero and one, and we can use this to control the color. So you can change the color with a mix RGB or a color ramp. I'm only gonna use two colors, so I'm gonna use the mix RGB, and I'll just plug this directly into the factor like that. If you want more than two colors, you can use a color ramp and add as many colors as you want. But if we set these two colors right here, it will just kind of blend between them like that. So I'll set both of these to red and I'll make one of them quite a bit darker. And I'll make this one maybe a little more pale like that. If you want to take this to the next level, you can add some noise. Use that for a bump map to make them look a little more jagged and rough. And you can also use an ambient occlusion node to add some like procedural mortar. It's just going to target like where shadows would be um, based on how close the bricks are to each other. So this is what the entire node tree looks like for the material that I made. Now, if you want easy access to any of these values that we made, you can just use the group input for that. So I'll use it over here so we can control how many bricks are deleted. And we can also plug one in over here and that will let us change how far they're sticking out. If you want this file, you can get it on Gumroad, you can become a YouTube member, or you can support me on Patreon. Patrons also get to watch all of my videos early, they get coupon codes for my products, and access to files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate a portion of that money to environmental causes each month. Links for everything are in the description. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.